Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. You know the drill. My name is Katie. I am the owner and artist behind Salvaged by K. Scott. I know you can only see the corner of it, but I am so excited to show you guys this makeover. This is the top of a china hutch that I picked up for free off of Facebook Marketplace a few weeks ago. As soon as I picked up this two-piece hutch, I knew I was going to separate it and be able to create two completely new different pieces of furniture. I've already made over the bottom half of this hutch. I'll leave a card to that video up there somewhere and a link down in the description box below. But this video is going to be all about what I did to the top. All right, let's head out to the garage and get this party started. This is yet another mid-century modern style piece of furniture. This one is constructed again of particle board and veneer. I promise no real wood was harmed in the filming of this video. I started this makeover by completely disassembling everything. All of the hardware was removed. Once I had the doors removed, I decided to take the glass out as well. I have never seen this before, but the glass was actually held onto the doors with some upholstery welting and a million little staples. And for safety's sake, I took all of the glass from the doors and left it on the other side of the garage. The center panel was stationary, but once I removed all six screws, it popped right out. When I went into Lowe's to purchase legs for this piece, they were pretty low in stock. This style was the only style they had four of, so that's what I picked up. I also already had three of the leg brackets in my hardware stash so I only needed to purchase one additional. There's a quarter inch board on the bottom of this that was used to prop it up and give clearance for the doors to swing open when it was on the original console base. I'm going to need to pry that off and get it out of the way so I can get the brackets installed where I want them. To install the leg hardware, I just held it where I wanted it and marked all four screw holes with my pencil. Once I had everything marked out, I drilled some pilot holes and was able to attach a bracket to each of the four corners. These legs are designed to screw right into the metal brackets and they're good to go. Once I had all four of these spindly legs installed, I could quite clearly see they were not the right choice for this piece. So they came off, went back to Lowe's, the kids and I stopped in at Home Depot and picked up some of these two by two square legs instead. So much better. Now it's time to clean. There is some melted wax from candles on the top. I just used my putty knife to scrape that away and then gave the whole piece a really good scrub down with my favorite TSP. TSP. 
Once everything was nice and dry, I went over the entire piece with a medium 150 grit sandpaper to scuff up all of the surfaces. And you always want to remember to wipe back any sanding dust. You want your paint to stick to the furniture, not to the dust. Today I'm going to be using this Art Minds brand paint. This is a Michaels brand. This stuff is super pigmented and very thick. I needed to thin this out considerably to be able to spray it, so I poured a few globs of paint into a separate container and mixed it with water until I felt I had a good consistency. To paint this piece, I'm using my Gravity Fed HVLP pneumatic spray gun. I had originally planned on using some fun patterned wallpaper on the backer board of this cabinet, but the more and more I thought about it, the more I wanted to keep it really sleek, simple, and modern. So I went ahead and painted the entire thing inside and out in the same matte black finish. Remember how I said this was pigmented? Seriously, one coat coverage. I did go back and do a second touch-up coat just for some areas that I missed, but this stuff covers so well. To protect my new black finish, I'm using Minwax Polycrylic in clear satin. When you're sealing dark colors with a poly top coat, sometimes they can get blotchy. To prevent that, you can make your own tinted poly just by mixing a tiny bit of paint with the poly before you apply it. You can see I did that by just not cleaning out my gun. I applied two coats of this tinted polycrylic and then rinsed out my gun and applied the final coat with just the straight up polycrylic. Now to reinstall the glass into the door frames, I'm going to be using some clear silicone. This is Gorilla Brand. Once I have all the glass placed back inside each frame, I'll take my caulking gun and run a small bead of this clear silicone caulking around the edges. Once the silicone is dry, this Gorilla brand takes about 30 minutes, it will hold that glass in place. Now all that's left to do is put it all back together. Are you ready? Can't take my eyes 
a good buy one get one deal anyways if you love this type of modern furniture flip please make sure that you subscribe to my channel before you go leave me a big thumbs up and if you could do me a favor and share my channel with anyone that you think might enjoy this sort of thing I would be forever grateful I'll catch you guys next time my best.